Hello everyone, this is Kenny Omega and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I'm so excited to be sitting beside the cleaner Kenny Omega. Hello. Hello, very nice to meet all of you and very nice to meet you finally in person. You as well. We are here in Toronto as War of the Worlds Ring of Honor is taking place. How are you feeling about today and the match that's to come? I'm always excited to do the matches for Ring of Honor when I get a chance to. It's very rare. I have a pretty full schedule in Japan, but um, especially for the Canadian shows, I always, always try to make it out to Toronto. Um, the fans have been kind to me ever since I made my debut in Ring of Honor. So ever since I was just a nobody in 2008, these people have been fantastic to me. So um, now that I'm just a little bit less of a nobody, I'm happy to be back in the main event for tonight's show. I remember the first time I heard the name Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm. I searched you before watching all the matches, and the first thing I watched was the 60 moves of Kenny Omega. I was just completely awestruck because there are so many ridiculous things that you're able to do. Uh, <laughs> that must have been an old <laughs> video because I don't even think you could make a top 60 anymore. Maybe it'd be top five or You've five or six. You've narrowed it down a little bit. Yeah, as as I've gotten older and less able-bodied, I've had to eliminate the things that I normally would be able to do, but. Um, I replace that with, with comedic flair when I can. <laughs> well, some of those moves looked extremely dangerous, so I kind of can understand why you took some of those out and narrowed it down a little bit. Uh, I mean, I always try to be safe. I, I never, even when something looks dangerous, it actually isn't to me. I don't like to risk. See, There's method behind it. Right, there's always a method to the madness, and I'm actually not a tough guy at all. Make no mistake about it. So I'm not going to do something that I'm scared of. So if something looks dangerous at the time, I, I didn't think it was because I'm the first person to cower away from a risk of injury if there, if, the, if there seems to be one. What would you say is the worst bumper injury you've had from being in the ring? Uh, it was 2012. I had main evented a match in Budokan Arena. And I guess, you know, since this is a music-based show, right? Music and wrestling. Um, Budokan's a very famous venue, yes. yes. I mean, the who's who have been there. You know, Madonna, U2, uh, Michael Jackson, everybody has been to Budokan. And uh, it's been a long time since we'd done wrestling, but we came back for a one-time show, and I wanted to pull out all the stops. So there was this one move in the match where I took a Frankensteiner, or a Huracrana, however you'd like to call it, from the top rope to the floor. And that was probably to this day the most shocking fall that I've ever had to absorb. You feel your insides bounce and hit like the top of your rib cage, and it was it was gross. And I would never ever do it again. Um, seeing the footage scares me, but that's probably the worst one. <laughs> uh, but but that being said, I didn't get any serious injury from it. It just okay. hurt and was. It was scary. You just kind of cringe now every time you yeah, think about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I would never advise anyone to do it. Well, when it came to the late 90s, that was when you started ordering Japanese wrestling tapes to your home in Winnipeg. Yes. Uh, we, well, f first off, there was like a, a paint and art store near my home, actually near Winnipeg Arena, and I would get tapes of ECW, and then there was like, like the best pro wrestling matches of the 90s and you know the best pro wrestling matches of the year 1993 etc and a lot of those matches were japanese matches and uh, up until then i didn't really know that there was uh such a, a global phenomenon of, of wrestling i thought you know it's 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 wrestling in america or it's nothing it's wwf at the time or it was nothing um so to finally see that there was such a cool and athletic style and physical style from Japan uh, really sort of changed my opinion on what I liked as a wrestling fan. Um, so my friends and I, we would go on this website and uh, we would each like, we would order five tapes each and then we would watch them ourselves and sometimes watch them together and then we would uh, reproduce the copies and then trade each other. So that's how we would build our libraries of of Japanese wrestling. 
Something that I found awesome was when you had mm -hmm. a recent New Japan victory, and then all of a sudden you just broke right into Japanese during the promo and pretty much shocked all of your fans. It was an amazing moment. Thank you. You're very I welcome. I have done things in New Japan that have, uh, well, see, I'm not actually allowed to speak Japanese as the cleaner. The cleaner detests... Japanese culture, the Japanese language. He feels he's too good to speak to Japanese people in their native language. But uh, as of recent, Kenny Omega sort of became its own thing. And uh, I don't know, the timing just felt right. And the secret's out for the New Japan fans that, yes, I can speak Japanese. I have been able to for years. Um, and I think the moment you're probably referring to is, is G1, yeah? Yep, exactly. Yeah, so sometimes um, there are special moments in a person's life that just go beyond what you can comprehend in the moment. And uh, the emotions came over. And uh, they ruled over any sort of preset uh, rule that was placed upon the Kenny Omega Cleaner character. I feel bad for it. I apologized, but it is what it is. And it. I can't change it. It's interesting because when you watch it, though, I had no idea that that wasn't pre planned. No. Uh, a lot of things that I do are not. I, I am guided by how I feel in the moment. And I think that in some cases in my early career, it hurt me. But now that I am older and a little bit wiser, it has helped me to sort of just follow your heart. You are one third of the elite with the Young Bucks, who mm. we'll be speaking with today. And you guys post some absolutely amazing videos together, just kind of like life on the road, things that you did on your recent UK tour with the elite. Mm. I had to ask, do you guys often have those crazy spray tan parties? Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, See, the thing is that the being the elite, originally the, the entire idea behind the series was just to show people what it's like living a day in the life in our shoes. Because a lot of people, you know, they sometimes see, uh, you know, backstage video or footage of a live WWE event. And there's sort of a disconnect between how their lives are you know, as opposed to how we live ours. Um, and so we really wanted to give the fans an inside look as to how we really are as people in between shows, in between tours, promotions. Um, and as our visits uh, and matches with one another, because, you know, we were doing a lot of six mans for a while, and then suddenly, you know, the Bucks were doing more ROH, I was doing more Japan we realized we had to take advantage of the moments to actually make stories within our episodes as well. So as ridiculous as it seems, um, the spray tan parties are, are real. That's the, the real part of it, not part of the story. And um, well, even a lot of parts of the story are based upon reality. Really? Yes. And there's a, well, I definitely don't want to spoil anything, but we have episode 50 coming up. Okay. And, uh, for the people that have been following up until now, there has been a, a story that we've been addressing little by little. And um, I, I just really hope that the fans of the series will appreciate the payoff at the end. I'm very excited about it. And also, congrats on one year. I believe that was very recent. It was, yeah. And I, I didn't even know it had already been a year. Um, hopefully, there will be a two-year, three-year anniversary. We really love doing the series. We enjoy it just as much as we enjoy doing our matches. Um, it's just really something, I mean, it, it's as enjoyable to us as I suppose one keeping a journal, something like that. It's, I really don't do things like a road diary or, or vlogging or anything, but I think that is probably our version of it. And it's cool to look back and, you know, see where we had been, what we've done and, you know, having these fun little stories and, you know, comedy segments, et cetera, et cetera. 
You are a big fan of video games. I think big might even be downplaying it a little mm. bit. So what is your go-to console and game? Because you collect things no matter price, rarity. That's right. Um, I mean, I, I, this year is a real big year in gaming. Uh, there's been so many high-quality games to be released. So I'm actually probably going to mainly play just PS4 and Switch. But... Uh, last year I was in like a real retro mood and I was playing a lot of, uh, like Super Nintendo and, you know, we had the, um, the NES mini come out. So I was playing that and I was even got into Tur Turbo Duo and the Turbo Duo, um, CD. And, um, I was, I thought that this year would be a, a Sega Saturn year, but it's just been such a good year for gaming that I've actually stayed in the current generation of gaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> what is one of the rarest games you found or one that you prized the most in your collection? Oh. You know, it's funny you ask that because I had recently bought a game that I didn't even, I, I'd never even heard of before. I'd went to like a collector's game shop and um it was a, it was a, it was a game for the PS1 that had never been released in America it should have been and um I don't know why I'm dragging up the story cuz I can't even remember what it's called right now um but but the game was about $300 um but I also own Mr. Gimmick which is about $320 $380 so um, I guess, yeah, those are probably my rarest the game software Okay. right now. Yeah. Well, being a music website, we, of course, must discuss music. Sure. Whether getting excited to enter that ring or when you're training, who are some bands that you dig listening to? Uh, I know you tweeted out the latest Fozzy track recently. I did, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I was actually really excited for, for Chris's new album um, because I was... I mean, I'm just a supporter of any wrestler that goes out of his way to make the time to pursue other things. I'm always going to watch a rock movie. You know what I mean? I'm always going to listen to something that, that Jericho produces. If someone else does something cool outside of wrestling, I'm, I'm definitely going to want to support it. Um, yeah, like even Austin Creed, as much as I hate him, as much as he hates me, it's a rivalry, but we are good friends on top of that. And if he does something, I will support him um in his ventures outside of wrestling so yeah the new fozzy song uh their single judas very catchy um it does not shock me that he's turning up number ones all over the world with it yeah. it's just if, if you hear the chorus once it's just gonna stick in your head and you're gonna want to listen to it over and over and over again um but yeah like <laughs> I, I have actually, um, see, I watch anime in my spare time a lot. I'll watch a lot of uh, American drama, but I'll watch a lot of anime as well, mostly before I go to the gym. It's uh, inspirational for me. I like sports anime. So uh, I watch uh, an anime called The Awamushi Pedal, and it's about bike racing. And I've also watched something, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, maybe some fans of this um, this show might know of it, but it's called Yuri on Ice. And some of the musical selections in there are pretty good and catchy. And so I've been listening to that a lot. And uh, my my tastes are very broad. Like, I will, you know, like if I'm listening to satellite radio, like I'll go from 70s to 80s to 90s to 2000s, then I'll go to um, like liquid metal. And then I'll, if that sucks, then I'll, I'll zip over and I'll go to like BPM and just, I have developed taste for almost anything as long as it's good. So like they played a track yesterday on liquid metal from a band that I hadn't heard of before called Miss May I. Yes. We had them uh, on the show. Really? Yes. <laughs> and I am an instant fan. They're awesome. awesome. So I'm going to listen to them more and more now. So, I mean, things like that, like I'm open to, and, I, don't, I know you probably don't know Yuri and Ice, but that is not the, their soundtrack is not like that at all. But it, it's I'm just a diverse person in general, so 
yeah, it's uh, going from something very pop sounding to, you know, Miss May I is uh, just kind of par for the course for me. Seeing that your music taste is so eclectic, if you could have one band write a theme song for you, who would you love to see do so? Oh. I actually, you know, I've, I've thought about that. And... Uh, like, even... Even at the time when I had, like, hours and hours and hours to myself to come up with an answer, I couldn't figure it out. But... Um, oh, it's a tricky one. It is, yeah. I guess it depends on what kind of character that'd be playing, right? I mean, for their flexibility, I had thought that I could probably get something like I could, I could get a band like Fear Factory to make something really cool, you know, because they have the industrial and they have the the uh, the synth element to what they do. But the Kenny Omega character is kind of a little different, and so is the elite in general. And we are more like boy bandish. <laughs> and I had sort of, I had toiled with the thought of actually singing my own music, Heavy. but having yes, hmm. and having someone else produce the actual, the music, like the background music or whatever. What kept you back? Track. That would be amazing. Uh, I mean, to, I have yet to find people that have been willing to do with me. This, I actually, my old partner in DDT, Kota Ibushi, we had talked about doing such a thing. In fact, we had thought maybe we're going to make a whole album together as something really special for fans. And... Not that it fell apart, but um, I moved on to New Japan full time as a bad guy, as a heel, and he was a very good guy. We were no longer a team, and we sort of had to put that idea on the back burner indefinitely. But that is an idea I would like to revisit, and that actually spawns from anime again. A lot of voice actors. Um, of the characters in the anime will end up singing like the main theme or the closing theme. And it usually comes off sounding pretty darn good. And it's usually pretty catchy. And I would love to give it a try because I, even if I'm not that great, I, I do love to sing. So I really hope that sees the light of day. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> it, I totally forgot about that idea until you brought it up. So thank you for reminding me. Very welcome. Mm. Well, let's wrap everything up. Is there anything that you want to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Um, I just really, you know, it's, it's rare that I get to speak to the fans, um, in my, in my native language here directly to them. I'm always off in Japan and I'm always, when I do speak, I have to speak specifically on a story or on a moment in the ring. So I really do appreciate everyone that goes out of their way to stay up late, to watch what I do live, or even to go back and watch things that are no longer live. Um, I think wrestling fans have sort of evolved back from when you know you had to choose a side and then stick with it and stay loyal. Um, there, there's more than likely now um, many more WWE fans that also watch Ring of Honor, that also watch New Japan, that also watch you know your mom and pops local indie as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's cool that we've come to a point where wrestling fans are just wrestling fans and uh if you've let me into your home or onto your mobile device or whatever i just want to thank you and i'm going to keep trying my best and uh trying to show you guys that the style that i believe in is the wave of the future i just want to say thank you so much for joining me today i really appreciate it as i as i kind of mentioned to you prior to the camera starting yeah. to roll people have been wanting me to sit down with you for so long so thank you well, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. I'm just glad we had a chance to do it. So hopefully we can do it again sometime. Absolutely. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time. Goodbye. Good night.